brief reprieve, the housing foreclosure crisis is heating up again. CBC's Diana Oleg digs deeper into July's surge in foreclosure activity. Diana. Well, that's right, Amanda. The numbers were going down for a while as industry and government modification programs kicked into gear. But in July, total filings rose again, up 4% month to month. But the concerning number is bank repossessions. Realty Track reports banks took back close to 93,000 homes in July, a 9% jump from June and a 6% jump from a year ago. It is the second highest monthly repo number since the survey began in 2005 and will likely affect home prices some. Prices have fallen so much that they're not going to be under the same downward pressure. It's just going to be a modest dip, but a modest dip right now is something that the, that the mortgage market does not need. Now, forgive me, but I'm going to throw some math at you. In Q2, Fannie, Freddie, and the FHA reported REO, that is repossessed homes, inventory at 236,338. That, by the way, is up 13% from Q1 and up 74% from a year ago. Now, the banks are harder to track because they report REOs in the value of the properties, not the actual number. Now, Lawler estimates that, estimates that by Q1 of this year, banks own $14.5 billion worth of homes. If the average Average home price is around $150,000. That means they're carrying about 97,000 properties. Now, you have to add to that private label securities and the homes they repossessed, which Moody's reports is now at 203,665. My best guess right now is that real estate, that REL held by Fannie, Freddie, FHA and other government entities and banks and thrifts is probably just a little bit under 600,000, but unfortunately it's on the rise. Okay, so take that 600,000 number and compare it to the monthly existing home sales number, which was 564,000 sold in June, less than the total number of just REO supply. That gives you an idea of where we are in that inventory. If you want to see the numbers again, go to the blog. They're on at realtycheck.cnbc.com. Amanda? They tell a very clear story, don't they? Thanks very much, Diana. Well, on an almost daily basis now, mortgage rates are playing a game of just how low can you go. Today, the average 30-year fixed rate fell to yet another record low of 4.44% according to Freddie Mac. Looking historically, that's quite a contrast to the 18.45% rate of October 1981. Ouch. But given the economic climate, are low rates enough to entice prospective home buyers? Well, Benjamin Clark is the president of the National Association of Exclusive Buyer Agents, also a licensed real estate agent in Salt Lake City, Utah. And Fred Glick is the president of U.S. Loans Mortgage and a licensed real estate agent and mortgage broker based in Philadelphia. Ben and Fred, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, ben, let me get to you first of all because you recently polled your members I believe about just how low they think that rates have to go before we're going to see a substantial pickup in buying. What were the results? Well the results were that 42 percent of the members polled said that rates could not go low enough meaning that rates alone are not a magic pill for the economy. So basically if you don't have a job um, you not you know no matter how low rates are you're still not going to get out there and buy so what do we need to happen if it's not just low rates what else needs to happen Fred jobs <laughs> jobs that's it, it all, all mean, roads lead to jobs yeah it's that simple I don't care if the rates go down to one percent the point is that if there's no jobs there's not going to be any mortgage uh, any uh, houses available for people to buy so it just doesn't make any sense it's a refi world now it's crazy refi world and hopefully the lower payments will throw some money into the economy and hopefully create some jobs. I'm wondering whether the banks are also partly responsible. And I know, considering the experience they've had, um, you know, they've gone a lot stricter with their um, <laughs> checking out of everybody's credit. And, you know, you can understand why. But nonetheless, they're actually making it harder, aren't they, for the housing market to reinvigorate itself by checking everybody so much, do you think, Ben? Yeah, I've had a lot of members complaining that they've kind of gone to the extreme of making it pretty difficult to get a mortgage with the increased down payments, increased costs and fees, uh, increased mortgage insurance. So it's, it's definitely making it a, a factor for people who want to buy a home today and are just not quite able to qualify. Here's a question, Fred. Um, you know, buyers have become used to, you know, various government handouts and various stimulus programs. You know, of course, you know, there's low rates for a start. And then we had the, 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 the tax um, to the tax credit for first home buyers. So what happens when eventually we get back to more normal, a more, more normal situation in the housing market? What's going to happen then? I mean, is that even just years out? We even shouldn't be talking about it. 
I think we're probably, and I was saying to your producer yesterday, that we're, we're probably going to have half a, half a Japan recession. What I mean by that, I think it's five years until anything gets back to where it was because there's nothing to really say to the economy, wow, these are the jobs we're going to create, these are the types of jobs, so therefore we're going to stimulate the economy like crazy, like we did with computers in the 90s. There's nothing out there to do that, so I think it's going to take a while to just slowly build up the economy. So what's going to happen then? We're going to have the foreclosures go away. I know Diana talked about all the uh, foreclosures that finally came on board. This may be the beginning of the shadow inventory that everybody's been talking about peeking into the market. So the combination of the shadow inventory and maybe the low rates and maybe a little job creation will give us a little stimulus going the other way now. What do you think on that, Ben? Do you agree? I think that job creation is obviously the most important factor and it's not necessarily new jobs but the number one reason that our members said that buyers in the market today are shy about buying is lack of job security. So it's not just necessarily that they don't have a job, it's that they're concerned that they may not in the future. You know, um, Ben, there was a story in today's New York Times highlighting that home equity loans are actually defaulting at a faster rate than homes with the more money borrowed by homeowners, the more likely apparently they are to default. So is this an even bigger threat to the market that's looming out there? Uh, it's certainly a threat to the economy. Um, it mentioned that the more expensive, the higher dollar loans were less likely to get paid back than the lower dollar loans. And, you know, obviously it's all about dollars and cents, and so it definitely will have an impact on the economy. Fred, would it be a bad idea to bring back, for example, the, the home buyer tax credits? I mean, obviously it did great things while it was in, uh, in Im implementation, but then now we're suffering from the hangover. You know, yeah. a lot of those purchases were bought, brought forward, and you can't just keep on doing that, can you? But yeah. is there something else out there? that we could do that would have a better effect, a better, more sustainable effect on the market? Well, I think Ben was absolutely 100% right. It's job security that'll bring the people who can qualify to the table and go out and buy a house, stop renting. That's another problem. The rentals are so much cheaper now that people are saying to themselves, why should I buy? I can rent so cheap. So it's a very hard thing and it's a market to market situation with supply, demand, jobs, and it's just got to slowly creep back into this. Even if we gave another tax credit, I don't think it's going to bring anybody forward. You've got to be comfortable with wanting to stay in a property for a long term to be able to buy. And it is a market to market thing, isn't it? I mean, it's very local. So, yeah. so Ben, where are you seeing, you know, as a real estate agent, where are you seeing the pockets of strength? Well, I, I, I think, like he said, that a, a lot of the buyers who would be out there today, uh, because of the stimulus and the intervention, have already bought homes, maybe prematurely even. They would be the people who would normally save up to buy a home, but because of the incentives, they would be in the pipeline today, but they've already squeezed them out of the pipeline. And so the areas where you're going to have uh, increased growth in the near future are primarily the areas that are going to have jobs that are going through economic growth at this time. It's like Rome. It's the new proverbial. All roads lead to jobs. Thank you very much. An interesting conversation, guys. Thank you.